um, where probably you can see behind me the people are, are taking their seats and you have uh, Joachim Finke there with, um, with a colleague and two um, further guests um, from Wirt Electronic and, and ADI and, and they will now bring you a little bit closer um, how to build a SPE device and not how to build an SPE device 2025, how to build an SPE device today, what do you need and how does it work. So Joachim, your stage and I'm looking forward to hear how to build an SPE device. Thank you. Thank you very much and, and welcome to the audience. Um, so I think we heard a lot this morning about SPE technology, about SPE standards. Um, but at the end of the day, those things are only instruments. Yeah? So instruments to enable people or companies to design their own SPE-based um, devices. Um, this is the overall target. And what do you need? Okay, just heard that my micro does not work. So welcome to the audience once again. Um, so we heard a lot about um, technology and standardization of single-pay Ethernet. And, um, the, and those two things, they are just instruments. Instruments to enable companies and people um, to design their own Ethernet-based devices. And um, all you need are three things for this. It's the chipset, so the, the semiconductors. Um, it is the magnetics to protect the chipsets from any uh, bad influence coming from the network. Um, and, of course, at the end of the day, the connectivity and the cabling. And for this, we have invited three specialists here from all those fields. Um, so, Viona Tracy from Analog Devices. Hi, Viona. Good morning. We have Martin Lyons Eder from the company Wirt. Hello, good morning, Martin. Good morning. And we have my colleague, uh, Marian Dümke, Global Product Manager for the area of single pay Ethernet connectivity. Good morning. Okay, great. So before we start, I would say, let's make a short introduction by yourself about who you are, what is your background and why you are here. And I would say, Viona, ladies first, just feel free to spend some words on you. Just, just need to check with our technics, so at least, at least we cannot hear Viona right now. Um, sorry, can you hear me now? Now it's better, yeah. Yes, better. Okay, sorry. Um, so I'd just like to thank Joachim and Harting for having me here today um, and uh, for arranging this great event. So I am the marketing manager for ADI's industrial Ethernet business, and I'm actually based in Limerick, Ireland. So it is the EMEA headquarters for analog devices. And for those of you who are less familiar with ADI, I suppose we are a global semiconductor company and we're headquartered out of the USA. We have about 60 design centers globally. Um, we have 10K engineers dedicated to solving um, the world's and our customers' toughest engineering problems. And some of those are around connectivity and Ethernet connectivity that we're talking about today. And we are spending on average 1.5 billion on new R&D investments. And one of those is around single pair Ethernet and, and what we'll discuss later. And we have a full portfolio of Ethernet solutions. So that includes physical layer devices that Matthias mentioned, but also uh, layer two switches and full platforms with industrial um, protocol software. So thank you very much for having me. And I really look forward to the discussion. Seems to be we have some, some. Oh, I can hear you now. Sorry, were you uh, talking to me? I I couldn't hear you. Sorry. Ah, uh, sorry. I talked to to Martin. So thank you, Viona, for your introduction. And uh, now I, I would like to pass over to Martin just to introduce yourself. Now now I can hear you too, Joachim. Okay. Um, yeah. Also, thanks from my side for having me. I'm Martin Lyonsitter, and I'm working for Wolf Electronic ISOs. We are based. We are. We're having our headquarter in Waldenburg in Germany. And um, so what we're doing, uh, our company is doing everything uh, regarding uh, EMC filtering and power electronics. And my particular group is doing mostly Ethernet connectivity, so discrete LAN filtering and um, RG45 connectors for, yeah, for LAN filtering with magnetics inside. Yeah, and since a couple of years, we also have single Ethernet as a big topic in our group. Thank you very much. Nice to hear Martin. 
And now, last but not least, my colleague Marianne. Welcome, everyone. My name is Marianne Dümke. I'm the global product manager at Harting for our T1 industrial product family for single pair Ethernet. And yes, as Joachim already mentioned, I'm based in Germany in our headquarters in Espelkamp. And um, I'm very happy of this uh, talk today and hope you enjoy this. Okay, thank you very much. So we see we have a great group here, very specific guys, um, all the guys we need um, for to device or design a device. And before we start into the real design of the device, just a beginning question to, um, to Martin. From, from your perspective, from uh, company Word, how does single pair Ethernet, um, how will it shape the future of the industrial automation during the next couple of years? Yeah, Joachim, uh, this is the question, right? Uh, how will it change? I think the future is already starting. Um, when we're looking back to the presentation of yesterday, yeah, you presented that 2016, most of the field buses that we had, um, or uh, the, the, the nodes in the market, were with field um, buses. And a minority was with Ethernet protocols. And now this has completely changed. In 2020, most of the nodes were with Ethernet protocols and a minority is still with field buses. And when we, I have some examples here, yeah? I mean, um, when we hear some news about what um, Bosch is doing right now in, in Dresden, they build up a factory and they did the factory um, uh, not only physically, so they also made a complete digital twin of all the factories. So every sensor, every actuator, everything is integrated in this digital factory. And this means you need tons of data that you produce every time to make this happen. And this means every connector needs to be connected with the internet, needs to be connected with the cloud. Yeah. Another example is um, a semiconductor factory in uh, Germany. They have a, a, a factory in Germany and they build up a factory in Austria. And they want to see those two factories as one big factory. So this means in the past, you have, you have, your, you have your machine and you have a nice um, display on the machine and you can uh, change the settings and so on, but this will change. In the future, it doesn't matter where you sit, where you um, have your computer from everywhere in the world, you can maintain your machine or the, main, the machine can maintain itself or the factory can maintain itself. And this is, is really a great future, um, limitless, I would say, um, and of course also a challenge in terms of cyber security. Yeah, very interesting. And I think it fits to what we have discussed yesterday here on the Harting Industrial Ethernet Week. Um, it fits together, yeah. So, Viona, uh, analog devices from a view of a chip manufacturer, which role does SBE play for you? Yes, um, a great, great question. And I suppose, uh, single pair Ethernet and indeed Ethernet in general is really a key investment area for ADI and it's it's a focused technology and I suppose because at ADI we see connectivity as really being central to that vision that Martin just outlined in terms of digital transformation, uh, industry 4.0, barrier free networking and getting data from all over our factory network so that we have an explosion of data in our central control systems. And I suppose as, as leaders in industrial um, automation technology and semiconductors for over 55 years, we actually identified this trend for a need for more and more connectivity and seamless connectivity quite early. And to what Matthias had showed, you know, the need to get data from the edge, from the sensors and the actuators at the edge. And we actually saw the challenges our customers were experiencing with the existing technologies, so like field bus and force 20 milliamp, analog IOs, digital IOs. Um, and, and a lot of our really leading uh, semicon you know, our really leading Sigma Delta technology or signal processing technology at the edge was capturing all of this wonderful data measurements and insights, but we weren't actually able to trend our customers weren't able to transmit them because they didn't have the bandwidth. Um, and they didn't have the reach in a lot of cases. And that's what was driving them towards uh, Ethernet. So um, this, this combination, I think, of bandwidth and, and reach that kind of Matthias had in his graph, that's really what's going to be transformative and bring about this 
you know, this killer combination that will really transform our manufacturing. So from ADI's point of view, we're always trying to accelerate, you know, future possibilities for our customers. And single pair Ethernet, 10 based T1L technology was one of those areas. So we worked with the IEEE standard around the 802.3 CG that, that Matthias had, had talked to previously. We were first to bring silicon to market and minimum viable products to really help people kind of explore the technology, test it, get up to speed with it. And then throughout 2021, when we were all at home uh, in our uh, working from our, our sitting rooms, um, the people on our manufacturing floors actually took all of this SP technology to market. And we now have a full portfolio of products um, available for our customers to use. And our focus now is really on helping our end customers get to market so helping uh you know get all of those systems that martin talked about in those different factories getting those automation vendors getting those equipments so that they can other customers can leverage them and we're doing things like development tools and i know we'll talk about some of those as well how they will help um our customers and and uh, your Martin's customers and virtual electronics customers uh, get to market with their end systems All right, so means it's it's um, a development step by step taking place or will take place during the next couple of years and uh, company analog devices supporting with evaluation boards with media converters and with final products and it, it's a step by step development yeah and I think we yeah and a continuous investment I think as well to you know to Matthias's point there will be continuous investment as as additional work goes on on other standards um, and that's obviously something the ADI will be keeping a pace with and we'll be working with Yi and our partners um, to do that as well. And we all, I think we all know how big the investments are for semiconductors, yes, to, compared to connectivity or to magnetics. I think you have the, the biggest part to invest and so the, the chipsets, they, they play a key role in this, in this complete picture here. And it's really nice to see that a company like Analog Devices is, is working on this and, and developing products and providing to the market. Great. Okay, Marian, yeah. Marian question to you. Um, if we um, consider OEMs across different markets, machinery, automation, robotics, um, what is needed for them during the next couple of years to adapt this technology? Yeah, so, so this is really interesting. So single pay Ethernet is not only a new technology, it is a completely new physical layer based on two wires. And so that means that we can't use the existing network infrastructure. So we need everything new. We need new chips, new devices, new cables, new connectors. So we need a completely new ecosystem around this technology. And that means in detail so that we need the basic technology, single pair Ethernet, which came from the IEEE, which we have heard. Um, so we already have a lot of standards ready from 10 megabit to 10 gigabit per second. And then we need a lot of more standards around this basic technology for raw cables, for cabling, for uh, components like connectors and um, cables. Um, and all this stuff must be available to build up the first SPE capable devices like switches, sensors, actuators, and all this stuff. And when all this uh, device and components are ready, so we can build up the first SPE capable applications. So it's a, it's a really big step to, to enable um, single per ethernet for the industry. And that's the reason why we are here, why we came together today. Yeah, very interesting. So it seems to be that the first step in order to at the end of the day, enable machine builders to make use of the technology is really to have the devices. Yeah, this is the first step, um, electronic devices from sensors to switches and so on. Um, and this is why exactly we have um, done this panel discussion here now um, for today to give some guidance. And um, just a question to our technical regie. Could you blend in one slide I have brought with me? Um, because this slide I like very much. It shows how an Ethernet device, no matter if it's single pair Ethernet or standard Ethernet, how it is um, structured. So you always have the same three parts, as I mentioned. So you have the, on the right hand side the semiconductors. Um, you need magnetics to protect the semiconductors. And of course, you need cabling and, and connectivity. So this is, I would say, the complete picture. Um, companies designing or would like to design SPE devices they need to consider. And those things we see here, um, they cannot be used from standard Ethernet. So single pair Ethernet is a complete physical, new physical layer. Um, so means we need specific SPE components um, for all those parts. Great, many thanks. 
And by this, I would recommend to start with the with the semiconductors Viona, with the with the yeah, chipsets and and FICE and so on. And um, so there were a lot of discussions about 10 base T1L and APL. Could you initially bring some more some more guidance inside? What is it? Where is the difference? Yes, yes, and I think that's a really good question because there's a lot of um, different buzzwords and how do they all interrelate. Um, so I suppose if we start with single pair Ethernet, um, which is like which Matthias explained is you know sing, transmission of Ethernet over a single pair, um, and that's different as he explained with these nice diagrams from traditional Ethernet with your two pairs and your four pairs. And then 10 base T1L is actually this new physical layer standard for what we like to call long reach Ethernet. Um, and it's defined by the IEEE 802.3CG. So that, that I think um, Matthias had mentioned that standard. And it defines things like the speed. So the speed for that one in particular is 10 megabits per second. Um, defines the media, like we mentioned, a single twisted pair. L is for long. So it's over a full kilometer of reach. And that's where we're talking about that last last mile connectivity and bringing Ethernet to the edge in our in our factories. Um, and it also enables power and data. So for devices and sensors where you want, where you need to deliver power, um, it's, it's particularly transformative. Um, we don't, I think the standard doesn't define a specific tape as a specific cable. It talks about link segments and return losses and insertion losses. Um, and then, you know, it, it's very low power technology, 10 base T1L. Um, and that means that it's use, it's useful for hazardous environments and what we would call explosion or intrinsically safe environments. And that kind of takes us to this Ethernet APL term. And um, I think Matthias might have mentioned that, you know, Ethernet APL, it's, it's a group of industry leading, particularly process automation vendors that have come together to use this 10 base T1L single pair Ethernet with some kind of extensions for to make it suitable for process automation and this zone zero hazardous environments. And that's where this really low power uh, capability of 10 base T1L single pair Ethernet uh, makes it really, really applicable because they're really uh, stringent restrictions around power. So you can have a FI with something like 39 milliwatts and that's really very low compared to what you would, you would have in terms of power consumption for standard FIs. Um, so that's just kind of a, a, an example of how it's it's going to be adopted in some of these uh, industries. Okay, thank you for clarification. So if we now refer to FIES, to MAC FIES, to other innovative switching technologies, um, Viona, which 10 base T1L solutions are available now by ADI? Yes, and I suppose... Um, you know, ADI has a full, like we have a full portfolio of 10 base T1L solutions. And the idea of not just offering FIs is that they're very, we've offered solutions that are specific to the application use case. Um, so whether that's the FI, whether it's a Mac FI, Mac FI is particularly useful for the actual device side connectivity, whether it's a two port, we also have a two port switch with integrated FIs. Um, and that's for some of our building applications. So I guess the portfolio is designed to provide flexibility to our customers to help them optimize the designs around their different parameters, be it power, size, um, reach, etc. Um, and to enable them to get to market with superior uh, products for their end uh, application. Now, all the solutions, we mentioned the standard multiple times, you know, once you buy from ADI, they're all fully verified, tested for the spec. They have... Um, you know, full extensive EMI, EMC robustness testing, because I think that's really important for the environment of industrial, harsh industrial environments. Um, and the other thing is we talked about power. So optimizing the technology for power is where we've invested a lot of our R&D dollars. Um, and that's why we've taken things like a MacFi. So you don't actually have to have a processor with the standard Ethernet Mac on it. So you don't have to have MII, RMII, um, RGMII support. You can actually talk to a MacFi with SPI. And, and we did that because when we talked to the instrument vendors, we understood that they actually use read for the intrinsically safe use cases, for example, or even for low power nodes and buildings, they used really low power processors that didn't have integrated Macs. So by providing a MacFi, they could actually get access to single pair Ethernet um, 
really easily and preserve the existing investments they had maybe in their processor front ends and some of their other uh, software investments. So, so that was really important to help accelerate this transition and to help people get to market um, quickly and preserve some of their existing investments. Um, and then I suppose um, I mentioned power, so we've, we've talked about that, and I've mentioned EMC robustness. And the other really nice feature that we're working on um, is diagnostics capabilities. And when we talked about, you know, um, at the start when Martin outlined the value of single pair Ethernet, it was really about this explosion of, of data that we were going to have and all of these new types of applications it could open up so predictive maintenance or um, asset health monitoring and some of these we've seen actually come to fruition over the last uh, couple of years um, because i suppose you now have the ability to connect uh, and get data at your fingertips so by offering new diagnostics capabilities what we're actually doing is enabling you our customers so you can actually identify if there's a the quality of the link and if that deteriorates then you can identify you know where the fault is so the location of the fault and the type of fault so that means you know when when martin gives that illustration of uh, a factory and it's all interconnected I can be in my central control office and I can send my, my, my service personnel to the exact location to fix my fault. And that's all possible with a seamless ethernet connectivity. So that's some of the kind of innovations that we're working on um, to you know, augment the full product offering beyond just a FI, a Mac FI and a switch. All right, many thanks. Um, but to make it com more concrete, let's say to our audience, who means really the first products are available they can be bought by analog devices maybe by somewhere else people can can invite the analog devices sales engineer and and can really get get chipsets in order to design first devices right yeah so analog.com and you can uh, google our analog.com you can google our fi our adin 1100 our mac fi 1110 or the two port low complexity ethernet switch uh, ADIN 2111 and that just released before Christmas and that's quite innovative to enable line and ring topologies which are quite popular in, in factories or in buildings particularly if they're replacing multi-drop and RS485 um, and the really unique thing about, about, about that is you get your two ports you still have your SPI connectivity back to your host so you can use a low power processor but particularly maybe for building automation type applications um, it really fits that use case of multiple sensors in a line and ring um, topology. So to, to uh, order any of these parts, samples are available now. So you can visit analog.com, as I mentioned, but also we, all of us here today, have a lot of common um, distribution partners. So DigiKey, uh, Mauser, there's also arrow.com and your sales or any of your DFE engineers from any of those can get you samples for and kits as well any of the development kits to help you get up and running uh, fast and on the website there's a whole host of information to make your development journey easy so do check that out because things like software drivers and um, do explore that because it makes development will help to shorten your development time which is you know saves money at the end of the day Okay, great. Many thanks. So means core message products are available. Great. Let's go to, yes. the, to the next uh, component needed, Martin. Uh, magnetics. So if we compare magnetic size of the standard Ethernet magnetics and the single pair Ethernet, um, what is the difference? Yeah, the uh, nice thing on single pair Ethernet is, like the name it says, yeah, it's only one pair. And um, when we see the magnetics of the standard Ethernet, we need magnetics for for each channel this means for 1000 base t1 uh, 1000 base tx we need two transformers and two combo chokes and the magnetics and uh, the filters around and for gigabit ethernet we need it four times yeah four transformers four combo chokes um bob smith termination and so on yeah and for single pair ethernet we only have two pairs and this means we only need one transformer, um, one combo choke, and um, to to yeah to to see how big this is on a circuit board, this is fitting on a small finger's fingernail. Yeah, so um, yesterday we heard from the company SIG that it's very very important for them. 
that um, for the sensor applications, all magnetics should be very small and also the connectivity. And with single play Ethernet, this could be an, an enabler uh, to make this all very small, that also a small sensor that we can bring all this inside. Great, and I think with regards to the future and looking what is available, for example, for RJ45, it is even possible to further reduce space um, in order to create an SPE PCB jack with an integrated magnet magnetics um, is something which could be possible for the future, right? Right, absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, um, uh, you also do the the connectors, and when we see your connectors, yeah, it's it's only uh, 15 millimeters long, so this is very short. Yeah, and uh, we can combine everything in a very very small way. Um, if you allow me that, I want to answer to to some of the questions that you asked before, and this means um, what is needed for OEMs across the market to implement single pay Ethernet in their devices. Um, so, um, you showed statistics before, um, where it was 15%, I guess, of the companies are actually working on single pay Ethernet. And, um, we, we have the same picture in our company. Yeah. So also we have, uh, customers, most of the customers that we have to do with, they, they work on single pay Ethernet or they think on to work on single pay Ethernet. Um, but um, our picture is, um, at the moment, there's not so much pressure on the development departments of the different companies because um, there's not so much on the market to, to compete with. Yeah? But I think this will change as soon as your company and um, you find out a competitor of you has a device on the market that is gaining money. Yeah, and then you have the pressure on the development departments and then you have the pressure to bring out also new products for single pay Ethernet. So in our point of view, um, this whole single pay Ethernet development will accelerate the next years very strongly. Yeah, many, many thanks for this addition. Um, Martin, with filter solutions, which, which data rates can be achieved? Yeah. Um, with the filter solutions at the moment, um, we can achieve um, the 10 base T1L standard, 10 base T1L um, with our magnetics 10 base T1S. Um, also for 100 base T1, we have solutions and solution for 10 base T1 plus power over data line. With power over data line, uh, the question was always if there are controller chips available for the PSE and the PD. Um, but fortunately, um, in the next couple of months, there should be controller chips on the market, as, as I heard also from analog devices. So I'm very happy for that because um, this also will, will bring uh, some acceleration in the industry in terms of uh, development for single pay Ethernet. If we have this power over data line, chances available. What we still need is um, higher data rates over longer cable reaches. So um, at the moment we have 100 base T1 and uh, 1, 000, so gigabit single pay Ethernet, but this is 15 meter or uh, 40 meter over shielded cable. And um, I think the industry needs higher uh, or longer cable links. So um, I guess the, the five chip manufacturers are working on those. We are also working on that. We have solutions already for 100 base T1, uh, like before. For 1000 base T1 also, um, it's still not completely in, um, in the limits of what is um, uh, the requirement of the IEEE, but we are very close. So we think um, it's already working. And if customers are interested in a uh, single pay, pay Ethernet for 1000 um, megabit, then they come to us and um, we are glad to help them. Great, thank you very much. So means core message for the, for the audience here. Also Magnetics first products are really available, can be ordered by, by Vuit and um, can be used to design devices. Great. So then let's come to the connectivity. So the last part, uh, customers need to design or complete their device. Uh, Marian, can you give us more um, insights about the cable and the connectivity for single pay Ethernet? Yeah. So um, 
in order to finally connect the devices in the field physically with each other. So it's, it's very important that we have standardized interfaces and that means connectors at the end of the day and um, to ensure interoperability between the uh, devices of uh, different manufacturers because it's really bad if you have not the same interface in different devices, so like sensors or switches and all this stuff. And for this purpose, we as Harting um, started very early in the with the development of a connector standard. So as Matthias mentioned this morning, 2015, 2016. And we have to, we as Harting have developed with other companies together the connector standard IEC 63171-6. So this standard uh, was already published uh, two years ago um, in January 2020. And so the beauty of this connector standard is that this standard really covers all the variants from IP20 up to IP65, um, IP67 um, versions. And that means so we have the, the standard IP20 version for cabinet applications. We have different M8 and M12 variants with different locking mechanisms with the well-known screw locking, push-pull, snap-in, and all this quick locking mechanisms. And we have one special version. So we have um, an M8 hybrid version based on an M8 form factor which has separated power and data pins to transmit even more power. And um, so the best thing of this connector standard is actually so that the International Sanitization Committees, the ISO IEC, the IEEE, and also the TIA um, have arranged an international selection process for a mating phase for single pair Ethernet. And the result of this selection process was the IEC 63171-6. And all the standards refer to this connector standard. And this is really important for device manufacturers because there we have the connection between, um, between um, the component world and the application world and everything interlocks. And that creates a big uh, security for all these um, device manufacturers. And also the entire SP industrial partner network with, uh, with more than 50 members also supports the standards. And we as Harting also have, um, to answer your question, have also launched the first product. So we have already launched the IP20 version as a field attachable version and as um, uh, assembled patch cords. And uh, so uh, different M12 versions will be launched soon this month. So very exciting time within Harting. And um, yeah, further in the year or during the year, we will launch a lot of uh, more versions, we will launch uh, SPE capable uh, terminal blocks for low applications, uh, for low speed applications. We will launch the M8 two pin connector. We will launch the M8 hybrid connector. And so in summary, it can be said that during the next months, we will add a lot of uh, versions to our connector portfolio so that everything which is known from today's fast and gigabit ethernet, all this stuff will be, um, yeah, also made for SPE and will complete the portfolio. Okay, great. So means that standardization also here plays a major role. You said that the standards are set, that um, the big connector manufacturers like like Amfinu, like Molex, like TE, they are all supporting the same standard, which is, I think, very important. Um, Marian, if we have heard today a lot about uh, different data rates, so 10 Mbit, 100 Mbit, 1 gigabit, maybe in the future even 10 gigabit, um, do we need a different connector for each standard, or how about this? Yeah, so this is a really good question, Joachim. So our goal was, when we start the development of this connector, so our goal was to have one connector for all the different speeds, because um, standardization is, is only so good as we have one mating phase, we have one connector for all the applications. So and that's why we have developed one mating phase for 10 Mbit applications up to 10 gigabit applications, so, and our connector system is approved to this. And so the answer to your question is no, we need only one connector for all the different applications. So, and so we can uh, yeah, ensure the interoperability in the field. Okay, great. Um, many thanks. So we heard products are available, products are even more to come by Harting, by different vendors. Um, last question with regards to connectivity, Marian. Um, how about terminal blocks? So we know that for standard ethernet also here and that terminal blocks are used. How about single pair ethernet? Yeah, so it's also possible to use terminal blocks for single pair Ethernet. So it's mainly designed or it's mainly used for the low performance application for the 10 Mbit world. And they are mainly for the APL standard because um, 
So the APL standard is single per Ethernet, 10 Mbit, but there are added some special features for, um, uh, for the process automation for explosive atmosphere, and they don't use any connectors because of all these regulations which, are, or which must be fulfilled for the, for the uh, intrinsically safe applications. And so there is the main focus for the, for the terminal block. Okay, great. Many thanks. So um, we heard all the three components, they are available. So means you, could, you are able to design devices. And luckily today we even have here in the studio the first devices um, available. And I would, I would like to ask Marian to maybe go to our application desk and, and show the, the first devices for single pair Ethernet. Um, and I hope Fiona, so I always thought that in, in Ireland the sun is not, not shining too often. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sun is hope... going to come out and it's blinding me. <laughs> so usually it's foggy and raining. So I hope it's, it's still complicated. Yeah, and when I, when I logged in this morning, it was really dark, so I spent the morning <laughs> arranging lights around me, and, and now it's really bright. But yeah, it's good to be sunny, so it helps the mood. Yeah, yeah. So I hope it's still comfortable for you because Maria now shows us the yes. first devices of analog um, and you could give some explanations. Yes. So I take yep. you with me over to our product desk. So we have um, prepared in our studio here in our Harting Forum in Espelkamp. And um, yeah, so we have prepared the first SPE capable devices, which we want to show you more in detail. And so the first application we want to start with is um, a very good example or a very good result of strong partnerships, um, which we have heard, which are very necessary to, to build up devices because we need everything new. So, and the first SPE capable device is um, a 10 base T1L media converter. So it was a cooperation between Arrow, ADI and Harting. And um, Fiona, it's, it's your turn. So you can tell us a bit more about this media converter. Yeah, so, um... I guess the, the key thing about it is it's just plug and play. And if, if, if uh, Marion, if you want to turn it around, it, you can see that it has the RJ45 connector on one side, and then it has the Harting SPE connector on the other side. And also the, you mentioned those, those terminal blocks for the process automation. Yes, and, and I it's suppose also the, the idea- connector according to the dash six. Yes. <laughs> Um, so I guess the idea is it's really simple, plug and play. It basically converts from 10 base T1L to 10 base T or vice versa. So what it means is you can just use this to connect between any standard RJ RJ45 type equipment. For example, if you were doing, um, if you developed a, a single pair Ethernet device, a 10 base T1L device, and you wanted to test it with standard Ethernet test equipment for net load robustness, for example, all that equipment comes with RJ45. So you just use this as an adapter between. Um, and, and even right now, while we're waiting for that infrastructure that you talked about, Marion, to build out of field switches, um, et cetera, you could use this as a, a conversion between a standard Ethernet switch and a, to get you to your to connect up your T1L device. So it's it's very simple, plug and play, but it does ex exactly what you need in terms of com media conversion and enabling you to utilize existing networks and ex existing tools. Um, and yeah, and so and it comes with actually the, some of those cable assemblies, Marion, that you mentioned as well. From yes. Harting. Per perfect. Sounds great. And so this media converter will be launched soon, so in Q1 this year, so and it will be distributed by the big distributor Arrow, so you can simply order your, your, your starter kit, your development kit with this media converter, and, but we will inform you uh, when it's ready. So, yeah, and you can go on the website and actually, um, so it's not this, this, it, we're waiting stock, but you can register your interest and then Arrow will follow up with you and, and, and get you a device. So. Um, yeah, so arrow.com is the place to go. Thanks, yes. Marion. So the second application we brought is the ADI development board, the evaluation board as well, uh, also for T1L. So, and, um, so this is also a really nice uh, development tool to play with SPE and to test it. And yeah, I will hand over again to Fiona to, to tell us a bit more and yeah, and I guess these are just, yeah, I guess 
you go to analog.com, there's development kits available for FIs, Mac FIs, um, and the two ports, which the, the low complexity Ethernet switch with the integrated FIs. They, um, the, they also have now some prototyping spaces. They have some of Martin's magnetics um, and some of the, the, the footprint for the connectors. And it's, it's all about just helping you to explore the technology and get up and running. Um, so it just gives you a little bit more freedom from the, from the media converter is, is very specifically just for media conversion. This is kind of more for testing and, and exploration. Um, so yeah, you can check those out again on an, an analog.com or Arrow, Digikey Mauser, um, and they'll help you get up and running and explore the technology. And the other point actually, which is good to note, is software drivers are available on the web on analog.com as well, C code drivers and Linux drivers. So, you know, don't you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can just use reuse use the software drivers provided by ADI. And that again helps you to kind of with your development journey to get a little bit ahead and to get to market faster. Thanks, Marion. Yes, very interesting. Thank you very much. So, and last but not least, I want to show you some uh, two more applications. So, we as Harting have also um, a small section which uh, develops active devices, switches and media converter, SPE-capable devices. And so, we have also developed um, a SPE-capable switch and media converter. And um, this product will also be launched soon in the first quarter of this year, so still some weeks to go. But I just want to show you the benefits and the features of this um, switch. So we have a six port switch. So we have, um, it's a 100 base T1 uh, switch. So for 100 megabit, for 100 megabit um, um, transmission, we have two um, gigabit uh, RG45 ports for the up and for the downstream. And um, so this is um, a nearly released product as I already mentioned. So this will be available in um, the first quarter this year. And we have also developed um, an industrial media converter also for 100 base T1, also with an RG45 to make it very easy to integrate um, SPE devices in your, existing, um, yeah, in your existing industrial Ethernet network. And um, so, yeah, so this will be available soon. And we are also, um, we are also working on gigabit switches and gigabit um, media converters. So, but this will still take some time and will be available later in this year. And so we have still some more uh, SPE capable devices here in our studio, but it would take too long to, to show all this, uh, this nice applications from different partners. So, um, and that's from me. So, and I give it back to, to Joachim. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Marian. Thank you very much, Fiona. It was very, very interesting. So means after this talk, we can we can make a make a final statement and say all people and companies need to design an SPE device is available. Of course, the the range of products will be enhanced during the next couple of years, but um, people or customers could already start right now. Perfect. So, and with these words, I would say thank you, really thank you very much, Fiona, Martin, and also Marian, to attend this. I think it was very interesting. Hope a lot of design engineers have, have followed us. And, um, and now, so we will do a short break so the audience can take some fresh air, fill up the coffee. And afterwards, we will continue um, with, with real products, with connectivity. So in the beginning, single pair Ethernet in detail, which products are available, um, which types, which pin lengths, and so on um, for single pair Ethernet. But then a big focus, because this is the industrial Ethernet we get hurting. Yeah, so means most customers today, they use industrial Ethernet connectors for standard Ethernet today. And we as Harting have a, a huge, a huge range of very innovative products um, to be soldiered on the PCB by which customers, design engineers can make their product more innovative, more smaller, more safe, more high performance. And these solutions we will present um, in 10 minutes at 10.55 and hope to see you here. Thank you very much. Thank you.